Good morning. Welcome to worship at Church of the Good Shepherd in Brentwood, Tennessee. Our worship comes to you this morning from Donovan Chapel here at Church of the Good Shepherd, and we're glad to have you all with us. This morning, instead of celebrating Holy Eucharist as we normally would, we will be celebrating and worshiping using morning prayer. For many Episcopalians, especially those who have not joined the church since 1979, this is not a familiar service. It was, however, the service that Anglicans ordinarily used for hundreds of years. You will find that it is a service filled with reading from scripture and with prayer. And I invite you now to open your hearts and minds and prepare yourself to worship the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by what we have done and, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Let us say the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me fly down in green pastures, and leads me beside still the waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, 
and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look upon his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him. For we shall not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God, God of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and of all their righteous offspring, you have made, made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All, all things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you shall forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life, for all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is still day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. 
Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then now does he see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he tell you to do? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple. But we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where it comes from. The man answered, He is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does not listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you were trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found them, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and that those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Surely it is God who saves me. I, I will, will trust in him and not be afraid. afraid. For, For the Lord, Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. 
and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one is in the midst of you, is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the title of my sermon this morning is Worship in a Time of Isolation. Did you listen to the psalm as we read it together this morning? It's the first and perhaps the only psalm that many of us ever memorized. It was Psalm 23, the Psalm of the Good Shepherd. And today is Good Shepherd Sunday. On the fourth Sunday of Lent, we always read Psalm 23. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. You have set a table before me. Boy, life doesn't seem very much like banquets and green pastures right now, does it? The sunshine would help. The incessant rain makes it harder. But the reality is we're feeling our way through uncharted territory as individuals, as a nation, and as a planet. In just a month, all of our certainties have disappeared and we do not know how far or how long into our future this will be our reality. I cannot tell you the answer to that. It is doubtful that anyone knows. There are still some certainties, however, that we can hold on to. We can be certain that the Lord has not abandoned us. He shepherds us still. And even though the valley be dark and full of terrors, he is present. There are preachers out there who are saying that this is God's judgment on the world. It is a sign of the final destruction of everything and the second coming of Christ. The last part I hope and long for, but as for the rest, do not believe those preachers. They are spreading anxiety and despair, and such is never the message of the Lord. It is, however, the message of the news media and the half-baked pundits on the internet and television and the weird articles your uncle from Boise keeps sending you every day. All of that anxiety is contagious. One person in a room can be calmed if everyone else remains calm. But if three or four others pick up that anxiety and start sharing it, the anxiety will spread everywhere. And the anxious tones of voice and the raised volume and the widened eyes of your favorite television anchor or commentator and are as much a performance as they are reality. They know that those tones of voice and those facial expressions will keep your eyes glued to the screen. It is calculated. Turn it off. Limit your watching of the news to 15 minutes a day, hopefully all around the weather report. And take care what you read. Print articles and reports Heighten your, an your anxiety by using the language of possibility. It might, it could, it may, maybe, and the most inflammatory adjectives that the writer can find. You do not have to read every article every day to stay informed. Yes, I know about the stock market. I know what the infection cur rate curves will look like if we do not stay home for another week or two. I know that people we are lose love are losing their jobs and that others are losing their businesses, that we may lose some of those that we love, and that the more we test people, the more we find out that this virus is much wider spread in our world and our community than we thought. I know, I know, it all seems so desperate. I also know from personal experience this past week how easy it is to lose sight of all the source of all being and all love in the middle of all of our anxiety and work. 
Much of this week has felt like we were on one of those giant spinny rides at the amusement park where you really can't see very much and all you can hear is the other people around you screaming. But let's stop for a moment and take a deep breath. The Lord is still our shepherd and he will still love and guide us if we will but listen. Pause. Take a moment to worship. Now grant you, this is an odd way to worship. Sitting in front of the computer or your iPad in your jammies with a big cup of coffee and the dog in your lap and your family gathered around you. But we are together. We are together as the people of the Good Shepherd, those who are part of the community here in Brentwood and those in many other places that are joining us this morning. Let us reach out with our hearts and feel our community embracing one another and embracing this moment, jammies and coffee cup and dog and all. Now, you know, one of the things I've learned this week about this odd way of worship is that you must bring your heart into it. This is not like a movie on Netflix or a television show on Hulu. You cannot sit back and just watch and wait to see what happens. You must bring yourself and your heart open and seeking the presence of Christ. And if, if when we say the prayers and when we read the psalms and canticles together, you say them with your heart and you hear them deep within you, you will worship and you will know the presence of Christ is among us. It is the key for us to know and feel our community at this time and place. I also suspect that this is going to be a time when we begin to pay greater attention to our faith and our need for community. The difficulty, the isolation, and the stress will strip away all the easy certainties. And before it passes, our hearts are likely to be laid bare. We are likely to learn who we really are and what we really believe in ways that we never have before. Because the easy certainty of coming to church on Sunday morning, of seeing our friends and listening to prayer and sitting in comfort and safety with music all around us, all of that is gone. And in a time like this, we will find, however, that the shepherd is always there, waiting for the flock to return and gather around him no matter how they must do it. You know, when I first memorized Psalm 23, I used the brand new King James version of the Bible that I had bought with money I earned whitewashing fences for my grandfather. Now that part's a story for another day, but that language is still wrapped around my heart. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And surely thy goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. My dear friends, we will, with God's help, come through this. I can tell, not tell you that things will be the same on the other side any more than I could tell you that tomorrow will be the same as today. But no matter what happens in life, in death, in life beyond death, our shepherd is with us. Amen. Amen. Let us join together and say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and his seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and, and uphold them, them now and Lord. always. Day by day we bless you. We praise, praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you will join me in the prayer for mission, please. O God, o God you, you have, have made, made of one blood all, all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving from St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. All right, y'all, this is the joy of the Lord. I know that it is Lent, and uh, this is kind of an upbeat song, but again, just considering where we're at, and just so many of us stuck at home and kind of feeling isolated and uh, lacking that community connection, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. May this be our prayer today. We'll pray it, we will believe it, and we will hold on to the joy of the Lord that is in our hearts no matter what this disease uh, looks like, and no matter how many fears are around us, may we overflow with the joy of the Lord.
prayer.